After watching this video, you should be able to describe adrenergic junctions, and that means you should be able to describe where the norepinephrine is being released, what the receptors it's acting on are, and which cells you find those receptors. And the major junctions where we have norepinephrine signaling is in sympathetic neuroeffector junctions between sympathetic postganglionic neurons and effector organs. We should also remember that there is adrenergic signaling in the central nervous system that does have some clinical implications. Let's take a look at a comparison of the parasympathetic, sympathetic, and somatic motor systems. And I just want to draw our attention to the purple junctions here and the purple receptors. That's our adrenergic junction right there between the postganglionic sympathetic neurons and the effector organs. We also see that there's some hormones floating around in the blood that can also act at adrenergic receptors. Those really wouldn't be junctions, but that would be the endocrine component of the sympathetic nervous system. So now we're going to take a closer look at an adrenergic junction. We can see here that the norepinephrine is being released into the junctional space. The major neuron that's going to be releasing norepinephrine are sympathetic postganglionic neurons. And the adrenergic receptors, the main ones that we're going to think about are alpha and beta receptors. On the left, we see beta-1. And beta-1 receptors are coupled to a GS protein that increases cyclic AMP and protein kinase A. And when you increase cyclic AMP and protein kinase A in the heart, it has an excitatory effect. It increases heart rate, it increases AV node conduction, and it increases contractility. There are also beta-1 receptors on granular cells that are found in the afferent arterial going to the kidneys. They secrete this enzyme renin, which regulates the renin-angiotensin-aldosterone system, regulates blood pressure. And the beta-1 receptors mainly are found in these two locations that have a very important implications for the cardiovascular system. Once we're done thinking about beta-1s, now we have two other receptors that are left. We have alpha-1s and we have beta-2s. And the way to think about this is that the remaining effector organs of the sympathetic nervous system are smooth muscle. There's very little effect of, of sympathetic adrenergic on secretory glands. So if we're thinking about which receptor is going to be found on the smooth muscle, we have to think about, well, what G protein is it coupled to? Alpha-1 receptors, they're coupled to GQ, so they're going to increase intracellular calcium. The calcium calmodulin is going to activate myosin light chain kinase and result in an increase in smooth muscle contraction. Beta-2 receptors, however, they're coupled to a different G protein. They're coupled to GS, which increases cyclic AMP and protein kinase A. And in smooth muscle, a major target of PKA is myosin light chain kinase, which gets phosphorylated and inhibited by PKA, resulting in increased smooth muscle relaxation. So when you're trying to think about where the alpha-1 and beta-2 receptors are, just think, what's the sympathetic system doing to that smooth muscle? Is it contracting the smooth muscle, or is it relaxing the smooth muscle? So for example, in the radial dilator muscle in the eye, alpha-1 receptors are going to be present to result in smooth muscle contraction and pupil dilation. Alpha-1 receptors are also found on vascular smooth muscle, where it results in vasoconstriction. So those are all contractions of smooth muscles, so it has to be an alpha-1. Smooth muscles that relax in response to the sympathetic system would be things like the bronchioles, for example. Bronchial smooth muscle has beta-2. When I activate beta-2 receptors, I get bronchodilation. So the, again, the way to think about it is, what's the smooth muscle doing in response to the sympathetic system? And that's how you can sort out alpha-1s and beta-2s. Just want to make a side note that alpha-2 receptors are also found on vascular smooth muscle where they can mediate smooth muscle contraction and vasoconstriction. It's not all that important to know about them being there. Probably the more important role of alpha-2s is to modulate the autonomic nervous systems, particularly the sympathetic system, where activation of alpha-2s suppresses the sympathetic system. There's also beta-3s that are becoming more important. They're found on bladder smooth muscle, the detrusor smooth muscle, where they can mediate bladder smooth muscle relaxation. But taking aside alpha 2s and beta 3s, these are the three major receptors and the major effects that they have to think about. We also can see that the adrenal medulla here is releasing epinephrine, which is a methylated norepinephrine, and a little bit of norepi. Those hormones circulate in the blood and can activate adrenergic receptors. And epinephrine, in particular, when it's binding to smooth muscle, has a much higher affinity for beta-2. 
So in physiological release of epinephrine results in more of a beta-2 effect than alpha-1 when you're thinking about effects on smooth muscle. So it's really all not that complicated compared to the cholinergic system where there's lots of different cholinergic junctions to think about. The only other additional junction to mention is in the central nervous system. There are adrenergic neurons in the central nervous system and they do mediate some important effects. For example, norepinephrine seems to play a role in some psychiatric disorders, for example, depression. And there are drugs that increase norepinephrine signaling to treat things like depression. We also have adrenergic signaling in the spinal cord and there we have drugs that can treat things like spasticity and even neuropathic pain. So it's just important to keep in mind that adrenergic signaling is not just limited to the sympathetic nervous system, it's also important in the central nervous system as well. And that concludes this lecture on adrenergic junctions.